Oops. thing isn't it welcome is to the it? lift heavy run long podcast episode number 204 you can find us at www.lifthavyrunlong.com on twitter and instagram at lift run long also feel free to email me directly at the address wilson at lift heavy run long.com please subscribe to our youtube channel and leave us a five-star review on itunes if you're not a member of our facebook group you should be because we want you to be there Search for Lift Heavy Run Long Community and request to join right now. My name is Wilson Horrell. I am one of your hosts. I'd like to remind you that the Lift Heavy Run Long podcast is not censored, so listen at your own risk. I have sitting next to my right, the most beautiful person in the world, Dr. Amanda Kimsey Horrell, Jack and Tan. Hey, hey. How goes it? Good. How about you? It goes well. Nice. Always a pleasure sitting next to you. Yes, of course. Every week that I can be sitting next to you is a good week in my book. <laughs> The Reverend. Oh, hello. You startled me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to mention didn't, my name. Didn't after 204 <laughs> episodes, hadn't quite caught right. on that, that yeah, it's yeah. going to get around to you eventually. Bunch of idiots anyway. <laughs> how, are, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. <laughs> and we have with us Big Thirsty Brian Swanson. What's up? Found his uh, way back. The band is back together. I was afraid that you'd gone dark on us. It's been a minute. Not on purpose, man. Life just keeps throwing up roadblocks and... Kind of prioritize that stuff. So trying to stick your head out from underneath all that money is hard to do. Something, <laughs> yeah. uh, man. If that were the case, <laughs> I'd be upgrading the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so you're moved into a new location. How's that going? Uh, mostly good. I mean, it's it's good. You know, it's just new house stuff. Still plenty to unbox. Places to figure out where the furniture's going. Um, we bought the house as is, so we're slowly but surely finding all the stuff that we knew that was there that needed to be fixed. But that is was. <laughs> yeah, that is was. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know how that works. So we got some fun stuff going on. In a couple of weeks, we got Michael Hirons is coming on here. Okay. To talk about the Almira. 50, uh, 25, no. He has a marathon, marathon and 50 mile. And a 50 mile, which is going on. Why do I know? Is that Village Creek? Is it, it is. Yes. The RD? Okay. Is. He is one of, <laughs> that one out. He, he is one of the, the best people on the planet. He's I've, awesome. I've heard good. I, I don't know that I've met him personally, um, but I've heard good things about him. So I am saying that having only spent probably a total of four hours with the guy, but he is generally genuinely one of the nicest what were you doing during those four hours i was marking off racers at the uh, i was volunteering that's quality you know time. where else that's where else would time. i meet somebody? oh dear <laughs> it's volunteering i mean because it's what all, I do. all your volunteer time that's I spend right most of my time volunteering right so he's going to come on here and i also have extended the invitation to both becky duncan and caleb sweezy who are the people who saved melissa burgess uh during her anxiety attack that she had oh. at Sillimore? okay that's awesome. You're going to have them on the show with Michael Hirons? No, no. Michael's oh. coming on yeah, in a couple okay. weeks. I was like, well, we're going to have I, a party. I, I told Becky that I wanted to wait until I found out what Michael's schedule was because he only had a couple of episodes in between now and Almira because that's at the beginning of May. Oh, right, right. So I just sent her a message not 20 minutes ago. Um, but, you know, I was under the assumption uh, ignorantly that her and that Becky and Caleb were like a couple running together, but they didn't even know it. They'd never met each other until oh. Melissa's thing. Oh, wow. Okay. And so then now they're so, married. So that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, are they really? No. no, no, no. She, <laughs> what, at least one of the two oh, of them is already married. They have different so, last names. <laughs> okay. Um, so hopefully we can get both of them, but I've just kind of been, I've communicated with Becky just once, but I didn't even send a message to Caleb because I was kind of like lumping them in together. And then now to find out that. Oh, yeah. Becky, bring you know, Caleb with you. Yeah. Who, just who? go. You talk to Caleb. Bring who with you? Who is that? 
But that would be fun to see. I, I really want to hear their side of the story and, you know, what made them stop to help her out. That would be a good story. That Bring Melissa cool. out, too. Yeah, I was wondering that. I didn't know about uh, – definitely get her out here. I didn't know about the microphone situation, and um, I don't know if we can accommodate that many. But I'm sure we can work it out. Let's see. What happened? What else do I have going on here? Oh, I don't know what I want to talk about. This is important. I, we've always talked about it, but I think we really need to do Let's it. Let's talk about it some more. We need, we always talk about doing a, an event, a Lift Haven Run Long event. We that do talk about it. It's pretty much that. never going to happen, but I think we should make it happen. I think that we should have, like, I think that we should have a swift and swole event. Okay. That's either a 24 hour event, 12 hour event, whatever kind of event it needs to be where there's partners. There's a running partner and there's a lifting partner. Mm -hmm. And there's stations set up for like, uh, lifts such as bench press or deadlifts, just a couple that are very easily judged that are, are tallied up throughout a 24 hour period that's ongoing the whole time. So it's like total weight lifted plus what, minus so, some kind of formula to where we're going, to, you know, according to body weight, maybe have like two or three different weights, weight classes, weight classes, okay. So if you're X amount of pounds, you're this much and you uh -oh. have, and you have, and you have, you know, X amount of minutes on every hour on the, the hour to do as many reps, to do as many reps as you got, then okay. you got to sit out for the next hour or however it may be. Vaughn's going to be your first sign up of an ultra team where it's a one man team that does both of them. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You can do that if you want to do that. But I think the idea would be that we could get so many people involved in it. Like, because I mean, we do have people that lift that aren't necessarily runners and runners that don't necessarily lift, but we're a supportive community. And Our reach is huge, and we're not in competition with anybody. So Deb said that's a great, brilliant idea. She did. Yes. Who did? Wonderful. Deb. If, if Deborah Noble, you're talking about, mm -hmm. if Deborah Noble thinks it's a good idea, same thing as Scott Hall <laughs> saying it works. So we got to do it right yeah. now. We should shut down the show and start planning right now. Let's do it. I'm gonna do um, it. We'll just leave the mics on and we'll just plan it. We, we can get, we can make it all to, to benefit Chris Hope, the Hope Foundation. Awesome. We get who, who knows a couple people. He does. Um, you know, we get MBS Fitness to, to bring their meatheads and their, you know, whatever we need from that side of things. We can get, you know, breakaway running and fleet feet. And there's everybody. We know everybody. We do. It could be huge. Be what? At Shelby Farms? I was going to ask, what kind of area are you looking at? Shelby Farms, this? where you could do, you know, have the, the big loops available and set up tents and have plenty of accommodations there and probably have people that would, you know, easy access to food trucks and things like that. So probably you're, you're talking like a trail Ragnar with weightlifting in between. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Or that's what we're talking about now that you mentioned it. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, we could... CrossFit Memphis is right across the street from the Tour de Wolf. So, yeah, what? You know what I mean? Like, so you can run into the trail from there. Oh, you're saying doing it at CrossFit, CrossFit Memphis. Have the have the weights there? Yeah. Or I, I was that, trying to think of another gym that was close to a trail. Well, what he was saying is actually doing it at, have somebody show well, up with stuff at Shelby Well, that's going to be, a, that's kind of a pain in the ass to move all that stuff out to a thing. So if you had a gym that you could be in a gym, that way if it rains or whatever, you know, if the weather yeah. doesn't cooperate, you already have a indoor option. All those, that's a great idea. That's a great option. And all mm -hmm. that can be discussed. That's what we need to do is get the wheels turning and actually fall through with it. I've never wanted to do it because I don't want to fall through with it. And I still don't, <laughs> but I want to get someone. You want to inspire somebody else into following through with it. Melissa loves to plan. She's yeah. always talking about planning stuff. Amanda is fearless when it comes to organization. Is there not a CrossFit hit and run close to a green line trail, something or other? Um, I mean, we, 
we could figure it out wherever we wanted to do it. That's the thing. I mean, it's just we got to figure out how big it's going to be and what kind. It's going to be huge. What kind of parking? It's, it's going to be enormous, to and it's it's all got to be centralized, and it's, as much as possible needs to be outdoors. It all has to be the it's the loop has to be short. It can't be any more than you know a couple miles, and the the weights have to be close to the loop, and everybody's got to be there. And okay. Everybody has to, to talk to one another. And so Smallest team is one person. What's the biggest team? Are we talking about two people? Are we talking Four. about six people? That's a good question. Four people. All things that need to be addressed. Two guys and two girls. <laughs> Bond's guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you could you could probably do like an all guys oh. team and all uh, women team. No, you could do a mixed team. There can only team. be two. <laughs> there can only Duh. be two. There can only be Alan. one. Alan. Alan said MBS Fitness is by um, Shelby Farms. I think, yeah, they're all in the same. Yeah, right there. They sure and, are. Yeah, Alan just MBS just is. said, guess who else is by there? And oh, yeah, there right. you go. Perfect. They have lots of heavy things to sling around. And then you got. Uh, yeah, uh, MBS is right across the yeah. Trinity yeah. from Memphis. Uh, yeah. The the key to it is going to be the run, the the tallying of the score and how to score that and how to make it. it it's going to be hard to look into it and say this is going to make it fun and competitive. This is going to we there needs to be there needs to be a way to know like man you got to get twelve reps on this hour you got to get twenty. But reps see on that's this the thing hour. like. I could see doing it a lot of different ways. So, like, you talked about, like, weight classes. And I see weight classes as, like, a way to categorize people for what award. You know, it's like an age group thing at a, at a running race, right? Um, but, like, the way – I think you let them do their own strategy. Like, it's total I weight. Agree. It's total weight. So, so, like you said, you know, it's – you got 15 minutes to do as much lifting each hour as you want to do. And whether I – I do the barbell a thousand times in that 15 minutes or I do 400 pounds, you know, 15 times or whatever, you know, it's my choice how I strategize that. So to total weight and total miles, total weight and total miles. You take the total weight of the two competitors and you factor that in to the total weight and total mileage. And that's how you figure out. And you weigh those. You Cause you up, don't, cause you don't want a hundred pound runner and a 400 pound lifter. And, right. Correct, uh, and that, well, that you would could, be like but the, the run. Team. That run is going to offset the. Well, but you want to make sure know. that the hundred miler runner is penalized for. I mean, the the hundred pound runner is not penalized, but you want to make sure that there's a go there's out. a balance. Yeah. You just find a balance. And we go out on the trail and throw eggs at him, and you need. So. That's right. You, we yell at him. <laughs> Hey, we make him eat until he's 110. That's pounds. too many miles. <laughs> eat this cheeseburger, you loser. Yeah, there's some. There's got to be some kind of an offset. Like it's like it's the two people or it's the team weight, and then that creates some kind of an offset for. You know, it's uh, it, it's the curve. You know, it's it's grading on the curve. Yeah. You know, it's like you figure out what the curve is. And you know who's going to figure it out? Uh, David failing. Is he going to figure out the algorithm because he's, he's a mathematician? Yeah. He's a mathematician, and I bet mm. that there's something that that Some, could be put together to, to where you're scored out. consistently over the 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 mileage or, or weight that you lifted won't even show up. It will be an ongoing score. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I like it. So I like go. it too, but I also want to like mix up the lifts. I don't want it to be like one thing. The only reason that I was thinking about just like deadlift and bench press is because that's pretty easy. You get into a squat and you have people that you got bad squats. No rep. Oh, no yeah, reps. Yeah, yeah. You get into a bench press and you're pretty much done a bench press or you've done a, De a deadlift. Deadlift and bench press. Um, squats, there's just... Lift heavy, run long, swallow. Well, I'm going to tell you, the CrossFit swollen. community can uh, can screw that Swift up for and you. Because, like, like, even the deadlifts, like, it's like, oh, he's bouncing the weights. He's not actually lifting. You know, I mean, that. That you're gonna have people. Complain. People are gonna try to mess with Swally yeah, and Swifty. Swift and Swall, I like it. Did you come up with that? I did indeed. That's Man. awesome. Yep. It was one it, it hit me about and I actually held on to it for over a week. That's that's almost like lift heavy run long. Swift and Swall. <laughs> we could call it lift heavy run long. <laughs> Just the thought. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. That, well, it's it's the first annual Swift and Swole event from Lift Heavy Run Long, you know? It's right. It'll be like Michael Scott. It'll be like the 5K. Like I'm married to Palmer. The first annual <laughs> fitness-inspired Chris Hope Foundation Swift and Swole, including 
MBS and CrossFit gyms to benefit put on by Lift Heavy Run Long. Lift Heavy Run Long. And then we'll leave our name out of there. Lift like Heavy Run Long presents. Yeah. Swift and Swole. Right. I think it'll work. I think it's a good way to bridge the gap. You know, got into this to bridge the gap between the lifters and the runners, the crossfitters and the runners. I think it's just another thing, another reason to get everybody together to say, hey, man, let's eat pizza, drink cheeseburgers, yeah, eat, drink <laughs> beer, whatever you want to do. Smoke oh, some man, crack, drink a cheeseburger. We can, we can, we can do laps. this. We can get sponsors to get, uh, get uh, Wiseacre that? to sponsor. I think an important uh, important part of this would be, you know, contacting like, and whether it's NBS or whoever it is, but getting somebody from that like powerlifting community or, or whoever else you're trying to engage, like, and somebody from the running community, and we're just we're just you know like bringing the families together. Yeah, we could even pair them off, raffle them off, get the the best lifters and the best runners. There's all kinds of things that can happen. It's gonna be good. And it's going it's going to be followed through with. Okay. Let's At least if somebody will fall th- we'll find um, through with it. How much is this going to cost? I don't know how that works. One million dollars. <laughs> What's our budget? No. I no, guess I mean, all that stuff has to be figured out. Entry. Yeah, we, okay, let's figure it out. It's all free. Right now, let's do it on the podcast. Figure it out. I mean, how much would you pay for that? I mean, you would, you would expect to pay a hundred bucks for a team at least. I'll say one one twenty. Yeah, I would see that as a for team. two people. Yeah, one fifty for two people. For twenty four, if, if you can do it for twenty four hours, I don't know if Shelby Farms will let you do something for twenty four hours. I think it, I don't know if it's going to be a twenty four hour event. You don't, but maybe twelve or something. Yeah, I could see a twelve. Let, do a twelve hour event first, and then grow from there. Okay. Yeah, I usually go backwards. Seventy two hour event <laughs> put on by Lift Heavy Run Long. <laughs> We're going to go the whole only month. Only the strong the survive. Long. <laughs> Nobody go to work. We're the only thing. Rabdo is your only way out. <laughs> We're just going until you, you rabdo can't out. get a medal until you get rabdo. <laughs> Medically certified rabdo. Right. And 12 we, hours. We're going to need a urine sample. 12-hour event. Yes. <laughs> Late, so later to be adjusted, maybe be to an eight-hour event, depending on what Shelby Farms will let us do. Many adjustments yet to come. <laughs> But it's. I think it's in the works. What does remind me what Tortoise Bree charges for their twenty four? Nothing. Hour run. Not enough. But that's just oh yeah, it's thing. like pennies on the dollar yeah. for what they do. I think. I I, I swear I believe that the that the camp fa- that the campsite is like fifteen bucks, maybe twenty five bucks. So that's my only thing. Like you guys threw out like one hundred twenty or one hundred fifty. Like I realize we're trying to make raise money for Chris Hope, but. Uh, I think you lower it to get more people there, you know, cover your costs and, uh, and raise money and you probably still have a lot of success or have some sponsors with some really good prizes. I'm good with that. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, the, the money part of it really doesn't make any difference to me other than, you know, I want to benefit Chris Hope, but I, if, if there's a price point that keeping people from, from coming in, which obviously there always is, but I would want to make it where no one would feel like, oh, man, I'd really like to do that, but I can't afford it. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about like a four, uh, the number that's stuck in my head, and I don't know that it's right, uh, is $100. Like a four-person team, $100, you know, so it's 25 bucks a person. Everybody should be, you know, that's a race, Uh huh. right? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the right answer is. That's just what comes to my mind. But I just want to make sure okay. we have really good food there, like – you damn right. And see yes. that, but that's all, else, that's all sponsor stuff too. Like yeah. it's either free or discounted. I mean, we, this is what we do with gift camp. You know, we, we get all the stuff donated and, uh, uh, it's definitely, I imagine definitely you have doable. to cap. I'm sure it'll be a lot of the same people cut. that are at gift camp. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> a lot of laptops and squats going on out that's there. That's right. You have to cap the number of teams, right? So, yeah, you do have to create because. some urgency or whatever, and well, and then just from a cost perspective, of yeah, so that's another another thing to to think about is because you especially with doing it in a public park, you probably have to get some kind of a permit for a number of people, so they're going to require like so let's say they give us a permit for four hundred or five hundred people, you know, you figure fifty so volunteers, we'll cut it off at you know, <laughs> and a lot gonna of, count. A lot of them will give you a rolling average or whatever, but 
Anyways. Lots to think about. And we do it this time, 2022. Spring of 2022. I like spring. Spring is is good. Yep. Spring has sprung. My allergies have been kicking my butt. It has. Just last week. Yep. That's that's a thing. I didn't realize how much pollen bamboo puts off. <laughs> <laughs> I have bamboo growing by my new house, and I come out every morning, and my truck is covered in green. And is that from the bamboo? Really? I don't know if it's from the bamboo. The bamboo is the only thing right there by my truck. <laughs> Man, you got some some heavy bamboo over there. I mean, you're yeah. So you the can ice, shoot a the uh, the ice storm, uh, or I call it the ice storm, snowstorm, whatever happened. Um, that happened like the week before we moved in or uh, closed on the house. And so like when we closed on the house and we went, we drove over there, like there was probably 10 or 15, I'm going to say 30 plus foot stalks of bamboo that had like snapped into the driveway. Luckily none of them hit the house. I mean, they wouldn't have done any significant damage. Man, not that, those, big, but. that bamboo is tough to work with, man. Yep. Man, I got my saws all out and just, that's what I was, man. I well, was it's going to be growing in your up. kitchen here in a month if you're not careful. You got to keep Yeah, somebody was telling me on it. I can't I can't think of what the term is, but uh bamboo um one plant will just keep putting up the stalks. Rhizomes. Yeah, so Spread. it just goes out all the way and and so you can cut off like these 3 but you haven't killed the plant because it's still got its roots and everything and so it'll pop up somewhere else yeah i'm sure it's trenched out they they trench that and they put you know fabric or some kind of you know plastic not, around there to, that. to keep it keep it going out um but so it's know. bamboo like kudzu kind of it just yeah gets out of control yeah my mother-in-law called me like I, sometime last year and said i got this bamboo in my backyard i need your help to come get rid of it i was like oh okay sure i'll go dang i go out there with a sawzall Man, I worked. I mean, <laughs> I was out there for like two and a half hours, and I was like, "I'm not doing this anymore." Like, we're gonna, we're, this is call a professional. So yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> what was the get what was back the out of that stuff out of there? It was a ton of bamboo, and it was twenty feet tall. Yeah, I mean, and that's so, what this so is. So you cut this stuff down, and I, and then it was it was behind a fence in her yard, so I had to get it over the fence. Cut it down, get it over the fence, and walk around well, the see, fence that's, and drag yeah. it out to the street. <laughs> that's the hard part, yeah. yeah. It's, I thought you were having trouble cutting it down. No, it like, cut down cut fine. Cut down it's easy. Just, it's, uh, yeah, it's dealing with it after that. You can be like Rambo and get a machete out there and be like... Burr, 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 like That'll be my workout, right? Yeah. That'll give you a workout. It's just hard to manage because it's so big. You know? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I set you up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lift heavy run long. Swole and flexy. Swole and swole. Swift and swole. Swift and swole. Swole and flexy. I saw you playing Clue at the lake. Uh, yeah, we played You like Clue. to play Clue? Yeah, my daughter likes to play Clue. And Uno. Do y'all play by the rules? That's uh, a hard game. I think so, yeah. That's a lot. It intimidates me. I don't cheat. That's what you mean. I played with her family, and I felt really, in, really intimidated. Uh, we played Clue, and we played the crap out of Uno. Yeah, I can play Uno. I mean, we played a lot of Uno, but Clue, yeah. Clue so much that uh, when we got home from the river yesterday, she made us go to, she made my wife go to Target and buy Clue because she wanted to play <laughs> yeah. at home. So yeah. Earl is complimenting your beard game. Earl. Thank you, my man. That means so much. <laughs> to get to get a to Talks get a beard, beard compliment from Earl, like the manliest guy on the planet, about being a manly guy, that makes me feel <laughs> makes me feel pretty manly. Manly, yeah, yeah. Things are going good in my world. Thursday. Feel like we feeling flexy. You hearing me? <laughs> you hearing me over there? Mm-hmm. Um, hey, guess what I did what? today? What did you do? Workout. I, I, well, su- I know. I know. Tell me. You submitted the official app to Slack to be posted for purchase. I did. Not for purchase, for free. Oh, my bad. The Lift Heavy Run Long so any, I put it to the Slack directory. So any Slack organization can install the LHRL app that you have written Correct. to their thing. That's awesome. Currently, they can anyway. But I wanted to get it to the app store where it could right. be available and marketed by then. How and many lines of code was it? 26,278 lines of code. That's seriously impressive, dude. That's a lot. I am... I am 
I'm very proud. I don't understand what that means, but I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know he spent a long time on it. Spent a lot of time on it. I'm very proud to have gotten that done. So hey. sorry, I was reading comments on the thing. You submitted the application for what? For the Lift Heavy Run Long app, the Slack app, to the Slack directory. Oh. Oh, I mean, so, to so the like, Slack store. So that app means store. like worldwide people could use it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And it's ready right now. There's, I've got a page and anybody can go there and, and add it, it to their channel. Yeah. But I would like to say that I did it, made it through Slack's, you know, guidelines and all that stuff and, and that it would show up under fitness. Cause currently there's not anything like it on the, on the, uh, app store. That's awesome, man. But it's one of those things that the more you, you know, I worked on it for like two years. I worked on it for so long and the, you, I kind of get through and I'm like, this isn't really, I don't know that anybody would, you almost look back and you're like, you're kind of disappointed in what it actually does, but it really wasn't about like what it does. It just became like such a mission to make it function, make it do something pretty cool and, and say that I did it. You have an application that is in production, and that is a huge feat, and there's a lot of developers that never accomplish that. So uh, don't don't start to beat yourself up about what it could be. No, I'm super could, proud of it. Could be or anything like that. So I love it. I'm very proud of it. It's going to be cool. So can you update it from time to time, and it automatically update to Slack, or do you have to upload it again? How does that work? You have to... I believe that, I mean, currently I can update it anytime that I want. And I do like five times a day because I see something that's wrong or that I don't like, but I'm not sure once it gets to the Slack app directory, if they will be more rigorous about you have Pushing to come to us place. every time you, you push, or you just have to come to us when you do, when you update a feature that does this, that, or the other. The things I, that they're worried think, about is their permissions, is the permissions that it's given, how much I can get into your stuff. Yeah, and I think if your app requires different permissions, you probably have to go through a recertification process or whatever. But because it's hosted in your environment, right? Like Correct. Their, their, their channels, their instances are just hitting your, yes. your thing over and over again. And so, yeah. So whenever he pushes out an update, everybody gets that update. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's going to throw up a red flag. And, and if it works like an Apple app or something like that does, um, taking Apple going through some kind of a certification process out of that conversation, what would happen is if you, if you have an app installed and that app goes through an upgrade, and it requires different permissions, the first time you launch that app, it should ask you for those additional permissions. So it should you should have to approve those additional permissions. And so I would hope Slack would work something similar. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. Okay. So like it you know, if if all of a sudden you want camera access tomorrow, you know, then whoever the administrator of the given Slack channel would have to say, Yes, they're allowed to have that access or, or whatever. Well, they certainly require an excessive amount of bullshit that I don't know anything about in terms of privacy policies and data storage po policies and data retrieval. And Where'd you find I mean, I'm assuming you just found templates, templates, yeah. template stuff and then put Vaughn's name in there everywhere that, <laughs> <laughs> everywhere that I felt like it could Perfect. really come back on us. The, Vaughn Rawls and Lift Heavy Run Long, swollen. <laughs> swollen, <laughs> swift. <laughs> swift. <laughs> Sexy. But it's cool, man. I'm super pumped up about it. That's awesome. Congratulations. That is awesome. Chafe season is upon us. It's getting hot, man. Chafe. Is that when you chafe? Is it Do you not chafe? Um, I will uh, in long runs if I don't eat, if I don't take the proper precautions. But I usually I won't run more than ten miles without lubing up. You know. What does precaution look like to you? Uh, trail a goop of trail toes. Trail toes goes everywhere. I just this weekend <laughs> told the story of Stanky Creek Ultra, your first race in borrowing body glide. <laughs> nope. Don't want it back. <laughs> sure, you can borrow my body glide, but just keep it. I mean, you can actually just have it. I don't need it to come back my way. I will also use Vaseline. 
I've heard Vaseline's a good option. No, it's not. It's not. I don't really. For me, it is. It's I not. Mean, I, don't, it, I don't really use anything for tape. I just make sure I've got spandex between everything. <laughs> and that's my thing. I just have to wear long compression shorts. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. my deal. My yeah. p- my biggest problem is monkey butt. Like I'll have monkey butt the next day, and that drives me insane. Yeah. I, because that's avoidable, you know. But I don't chafe anywhere else. Sometimes on my feet, I'm like. My stepmom still laughs about finding some anti-monkey butt powder underneath the bed <laughs> when I was living o- over there. I, I get, I, you don't think about how probably foreign that is to oh, yeah. someone who doesn't have a lot of monkey butt. All right. But it's essential. Yeah. Um, gold bond and anti-monkey butt. and uh, Dude, I, yeah, I've got, speaking of gold, I've got some gold bond. I still got a stick of that that's in the bathroom with, that I bought in Disney World last year you can chafe to death at disney world you can P- and people you better, do it a lot same yeah same thing like you're just walking a lot of miles yeah so that's a thing and so i have that gold bond trail toes and vaseline nipple covers and uh and body glide i think I, body glides as good as anything my nipples are made out of like steel are they so they don't bleed they've never bled I Man. could probably kill you with them. Really? I would think that would that <laughs> would make walk it worse. Over there to you and go pow. Yeah, I mean if you're <laughs> if you're like, slashing people, if you're shanking people with your nipples, then that would that would seem like it would it in, would be worse. Instead of his nipples chafing, he just cuts holes in a shirt. Puts, just slices it up. <laughs> right. like, so by the end of a really long by the end of a little long run, you know, he's just got a little hole in his shirt. Looks like he'd been attacked by a cat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like a really inappropriate shirt to wear at that point. <laughs> Ohio's Backyard Ultra. You ever heard of that? I'm nope. not. It's in Ohio. It is in Ohio, and it's in someone's backyard. Lucky guess. I know. And it is a qualifier for the Big Backyard Ultra. Are you all familiar with I'm that? I'm familiar yes. with that. Big, yeah. I yeah. was going to say, well, usually when something's called backyard something, it's hard. Um, Laz is involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we know it's hard. Yeah. The, <laughs> this is a, they had it last week. Um, and this goes 6.7 kilometers per hour. So you have, that's all you're allowed to do. You get, that's right. You do that one loop. And if you're at the starting line within an hour, you can start again. If you're not, you're done. 6.7. What's that, about four miles? Four and a half miles. Four and a half miles. Isn't that about what his regular... What the Big Backyard Ultra is, I think. So it's very close to that, isn't it? I think, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the time. There may be a different time. What on, is the, what's the record on, on the his. Big Backyard Ultra? Well, uh, that one guy finally quit, and he wished he hadn't quit, right? The one that won? Correct. But that was for the that was for a different race than right. this. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was interesting because we listened to that about the the big backyard ultra and how it's a different kind of race because you don't ever actually win. You have to quit at some point. And so the guy that won was just the last quitter. Was just the last quitter. And he wonders if he could have gone more, if he should have gone more, blah, blah, blah. The same thing that we all do. So they don't call you a winner at all? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. But but you you didn't come. Like you didn't finish a goal. Yeah, you didn't cross the finish line first. You were just the last one to cross the finish line successfully without quitting. It just feels different, I guess. I wouldn't know because I've never won a race, but <laughs> either way. Oh, right. Vaughn can yeah. tell you about it. Yeah, when I win races all the time. <laughs> um, it feels really good. But the winner of this one lasted 55 hours and ran 368 kilometers. And this guy was, this was the Iowa backyard. Uh, Ohio. Ohio. The Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. And it's a qualifier for the big backyard. Correct. Okay. What do you have to do to qualify? Win it. Oh, you only get one person. There's only one person who competes. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't have any idea. <laughs> you gotta win, and you're the only one that gets to go. That's right. Yeah, I didn't realize you had to qualify to go to Laz's backyard. Race. You got to do something slightly less stupid to prove that you're yeah. stupid enough to do the more. Stupid I don't know thing. what else qualify. I mean, I don't know how the other people get in, but you know how Laz is. There's no telling what kind of weird. Just bring him a box of cigarettes. Yeah, I was going to say, probably has some weird thing that you just sign up for. But he did 300. What is 368? 
I was doing the Come math. On. So uh, 300 kilometers is 186 miles. Another 50 kilometers is another 30 miles. So that's four, uh, 411. 417, I think. It's 186.411358 miles, 300K. Right, but he said 360 something K. Oh, well, you yeah, yard 50 begins there. with 204 plus miles complete. Um, it was three days, and the girl was 55. The second place girl was 55 years old. 365K is 226 miles. That's a lot. Did you pull the plug? I don't know what's happening. No, uh, my, <laughs> my computer was about to die because I didn't have my plug. <laughs> I just got tired of He's off life support. He I just died. got tired of this podcast. And he just, just walked out. I'm so confused. Play some music. Like Technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Speaking of Disney, since there was a gap in whatever... I would. I said I'd never do it again, but it's like I'd like to go do the Dopey Challenge again, just to. So to go I, do I will it. tell you, after we did it in 2019, my commitment was to go do a Disney race every year, and then. Oh, that sounds good too. The pandemic said, "Hold yeah. my beer." I bet you you can't, and uh, and so that's why. And so we were going to Star Wars weekend yeah. for Dawn's birthday this past year yeah. in 2020, and I just haven't even tried to plan because. Um, I mean, one, I'm not exercising a whole lot right now, but um, two, like, I just feel like most races still aren't even really sure if they're going to happen. Yeah, I was going to say, and, they're supposed to announce the Dopey Challenge in the next few days, if it's going to be virtual or not. I wonder if, well, maybe we could look at maybe starting that kind of thing next year. I wouldn't uh, mind doing that kind uh, yeah, of thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, and the thing is, is like, if an, if you said like, hey, let's go do the Dopey Challenge, I'd go do the Dopey Challenge again. I don't need to do the Dopey Challenge again. Like I would go to that race weekend and do like the half marathon or the full marathon mm -hmm. because I think that would be fun, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to doing the dopey challenge if somebody else was like, I need somebody to do the dopey challenge with yeah. me. I'd be like, okay, let's go do the dopey challenge because I'm dopey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a quite a few different, I mean, I don't mind. Yeah. I wouldn't mind doing any of those. I, th I just think that that whole experience was so different and Disney is so organized. Every part of Disney is so amazingly organized that everything just flows, even with a million people there. Yep. It's just incredible. It's, it's like they know how to move people yep. right, and make money doing it. Yep. They're going to be saying the same shit about the Swift and Swole 2022. <laughs> they sure well, are. Turns out, Watch. Turns out, you know, we're going to have Disney. Uh, Sponsored by spons Disney. Sponsor it and, and help run it. Sponsored and, by Run Disney. And, uh, yeah. and Mickey's going to be the, the bodybuilder. <laughs> We're going to have swole, like swole Mickey out there. Well, you know those little glitter cups that we got when we were in the park? Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. So I still have mine. Of course, all the wording is washed off of it. But it's still, when I drink out of it, I, I think about Disney and it, it just, it's like, I love this cup. <laughs> this is yeah. when we went to Disney and just yeah, did I, something crazy. I love that. I, I have all I my. Disney races. I have like six uh, resort coffee mugs I drink coffee out of every day. Uh, from when we went in the last uh, water park this past trip, uh, if you bought a souvenir beer cup, the beers instead of twelve dollars were six dollars, and so we bought all the. Got to pay thirty dollars for the cup, but the beers are <laughs> no, no, price. No, it was, I'm just it was It's a numbers game. <laughs> just it was, you buy, it was eleven dollars <laughs> for the first one, six dollars. And they're they're they are playing the numbers game that. Most people aren't going to order two or whatever. It right, but costs yeah, to, three yeah. days, three yeah. different color cups. They alternate the colors. So we were there three days. So now we have six cups, three different colors. Okay. Very cool. And it's kind of cool. It's the same thing. Mm. How but, big's the cup? Uh, it's probably a twenty-four ounce cup. That's not bad. Six dollars for a twenty-four ounce beer at Disney at a Disney water park. It is not bad. bad. Usually they're nine dollars. Yeah, for huh. between sixteen and nine to twelve dollars for. Yeah, you know, sixteen to twenty ounces. Bring like you three twenty dollar bills when you get out of there live. <laughs> but I mean, there's there's three a ton of races. Drop three twenties, do. do Geronimo and roll. I'll go do the princess half that. with you. Okay, I'd like to do that one. <laughs> the, and the Star Wars. The Star Wars. There's the wine and dine. Yeah. Uh, in October, September, October time frame. There's a bunch of races. There. So I'm in school right now. So I'd like to say next year, I'd really like to start looking at 
doing some running again and kind of be serious about it. I just want to get back to going to Disney every year. Like, and I like planning it around a race just because. But mm-hmm. uh, That's some fitness goals. I just want to get back to going to Disney every year <laughs> and playing the race. Sounds pretty good. That's what if we're I got a race here. to go, then. <laughs> I already go every year. It's just I have so many other people that don't go to races that go with me. Well, that'll be their day to hang out by the pool or go to the water park while we're doing the stupid thing. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so funny because uh, we did, you know, those races were so early in the morning. By the time you suffered, came home, got a shower, and you walked around the park and kind of walked off, you know, the soreness for the day. It was like, oh, that's fun. And then you go to bed and do it again and a little bit longer and then go shower yeah. and ice bath and go walk around the park again. It's kind of like it erased your memory every time. Yeah. <laughs> and, then you, and then you went for a, a longer, super stupid distance. But And we even ended up at the park on Sunday, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Things Is that the day so, you left on Sunday? No, we stayed till Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Mm-hmm. Things are so different there now, man. I, I would make sure everything was like 100% open before I even thought about it. Well, and that's why, yeah. Like you I, said Epcot was closed, right? No, it wasn't. It was open. But okay. It's just a lot of the shops and things are closed. <clears throat> the dining is not like it normally is. You know, you have to mobile order things. Speaking you of dining, you know. I, I follow some people on Facebook, and apparently there's fancy schmancy dining at Disney and these oh, yeah. real nice places. Where are these at? That's are they like secret or what do you I don't maybe I don't know what you, you can mean. you can have dinner in uh in Cinderella's castle. Yeah, I knew that, but these these well, people were going to like top dollar Well they're pretty expensive. places there. There there's a couple there's a couple of those types of places in Epcot like the I don't know if it's top dollar. I mean, I guess that... that It's like really fine dining. Like the plates were amazing, like gourmet. There's several of those, yeah. Okay. I I don't know. I just saw like the the junk places, the fast food type. Oh, no. I I just uh, wonder where these places are. There's like a hibachi place in Epcot. Um, Okay. There's a place that's like... um, I'd have you had to have like a secret... Texas, you know, like Texas Day Brazil. There's one of those at the... uh, it's uh, I want to call it the Hawaiian Resort. What's it called? Oh, Ohana. Uh, Ohana. Uh, but what's what's the, the resort? Polynesian. That, the Polynesian. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so okay. You go in there, and if you if you go to breakfast, they bring this big. It's not a buffet, but they bring this plate that's about this big around. It's full of sausage and bacon and eggs and biscuits and gravy and everything else. Ooh, is bringing on your table. That sounds you can fancy. Use much they'll bring as much. Mo- of it as you most want. of the resorts um, have a okay. high end restaurant. Gotcha. And and there are lots of high-end restaurants in the parks, like uh, in Canada, and La Cellier is a steakhouse. Right. That's a really nice steakhouse. I mean, we go in there and eat. It'll cost oh, that, $400 for my family. To okay. Eat. There's okay. a there's a really fancy restaurant in the French uh, part of yeah, it, uh, every, Epcot. Yeah, every one of those lands has at least one pretty nice uh, thing. And that's what we do is we get the free dining. Well, it's not free, but it's you pay all yeah. 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 So we get one of those every day. So okay. You get a breakfast. You get a breakfast, lunch, and a sit-down meal. Okay, because that's well, that's what I did miss. Like, I didn't like. I don't really care for a lot of junk food, and I would have liked to have gone for w- at least one meal that day and sat down and had like real food. Oh yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, we we went. We broke oh. off and went to that one place and sat down and ate because I was wanting real food that we went to. Yeah, a couple yeah. of us went to. I can't remember. I can't remember I, where I mean, we the were. Problem, the problem is, is. You get a big, as big a group as we had last time, and well, that's, yeah. when, that's really when it becomes a struggle. There's right. just yeah. too many people with different, uh, different tastes, and, and it's hard like to make that. a reservation for more than like four or five people. Yeah. And I kept chasing Pooh around, and every time I went somewhere, he was in some other place <laughs> walking around. She means well, Winnie so the can, Pooh. Just to be can, clear, what you can do is you can make you, you have to make your reservations for these places months in advance. See, I don't and know. And you ought to, that. and you'll and see the other thing that, that he does. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the other thing that he does. You're not different. sorry, or you wouldn't interrupt it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't believe you. I think you did it on purpose. And that's why you said, as you're pointing to him, I'm sorry to interrupt. But go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> we stayed off property. Staying on property oh, gives yeah. you the advantage yeah. of getting all these months in advance reservations that he's talking uh, about. Oh, so if we stay off property, we cannot be like, hey, I'm uh, going You can make reservations, I'm sure, but it might not it's be just a little, Yeah, it's okay. just a little uh, harder. And so we know, and they'll tell you if the characters are going to be there. Oh. So it's like, okay, I'll, and you'll know which restaurants have character breakfasts or dinners and things like that. So you just make reservations for those places. Huh. Yes, sir. 
Is there only one character at a time floating around no. Disney? I mean, one one of that particular character? Oh, yes. yes. So you're uh, not gonna, each, one, Pooh's not going to be here no, no. and another sighting I believe here. there's one in each park. Oh. So, <clears throat> like, you won't see Mickey. You only see Mickey one time in the Magic Kingdom. I feel like that's a very good question I just asked. Yeah, that is a good question. There's, <laughs> there's rules about it. They can't. I mean, a kid would freak out if he saw Mickey. Can't just have yeah running into each other and having right. like a, a yeah, yeah. M- converging of worlds. They have very strict rules. If you work in a park, there's all. I imagine there's. All I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard it. There is an apparently it's like, it's like an, Highlander. The underground <laughs> of Disney one. World is supposed to be just phenomenally crazy. Yeah, miles and miles of underground tunnels. Yeah. So that Mickey can disappear behind a fence. And walk a hundred yards and be somewhere else without having to walk through the. Yeah. They said people are wait on trash detail all the time, dressed in tourist clothes. People coming out from behind this thing, picking up that piece of garbage, going back underground. Well, like that. The whole concept of it being a magical place is. Uh, yeah, it is definitely magic. Like one of the, I read this really uh, interesting to me article uh, that talked about like you realize there's no mosquitoes at Disney World. <laughs> It's and they're in the middle of a swamp, effectively in you know Florida, and there's no mosquitoes at Disney World, and like that is by design, like nowhere on uh, Disney World property is there standing water that doesn't have a fountain that's keeping the water moving, and no buildings have a flat spot or anything where water can gather. Hmm. And like the wow. roads are by design, like the water is going to flow off somewhere a hundred percent of the time so that there isn't that place for it to puddle that a mosquito could land and breed and that hmm. kind of a thing. Well, again, I've heard this, just heard it. So, you know, it's true. But like <laughs> part of the, um, if you're trying to get a job there, part of the job process interview or whatever is you have to find the office where you're supposed to go interview at. Like, and apparently it's in the, the tunnels and stuff. If you can mm. get there, that's your first like winning <laughs> winning mark that you've made it to wow. the office to do the interview. But did, yeah, Disney does such an amazing job of like every single detail is well thought of. Tower Terror <laughs> is one foot shorter than it has to be. Um, if it was one foot taller, they'd have to put a red blinking light on top of it for aircraft. Hmm. That's how they decided how tall they were going to make it. Wow. That's the one you guys convinced me to get on where I kept grabbing Petey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like free fall drops. That took a while. And they, they were like, Amanda, there's a four-year-old getting on this ride. You're okay. <laughs> You're going to be okay. I was like, I'm not riding that. I can't imagine you being scared of a ride ever. That, really? I, I don't like the, the, free, the free fall stuff. Wow. Murphy wouldn't ride that one either. She, but she rode Rock and Roller Coaster twice. But they got me on there. It was fun after we got on there because we dropped just a few. Fl- Sometimes it'd be just a couple floors or one, or maybe maybe it would do a big drop. But it was we kind of bounced, and I was and like, then every once in a while they'd open up the doors so you could actually see yeah, out yeah. into yeah. the park while you're yeah. bouncing. And I'm good for it's a small world. <laughs> Other than that, I don't I don't do all take that. you on a teacup ride. No way, man. <laughs> uh, they had one of those Hickory Ridge Mall that I got sick on. Um, that and I got sick on the Tennessee Tilt. I, I get sick. I can do one ride. And the, then the I'm rock and roll roller coaster is probably show. one of my favorite ones. It's a good ride, yeah. What's funny, awesome a lot of the ride. new rides now, uh, like a lot of the Harry Potter rides at Universal, they do this what? mixture of you're in a cart, but the cart like moves in three directions, and then sometimes you're watching screen, like yeah. a TV screen, and my mind just can't sync up with what my body is feeling, and it makes me sick. Yeah, that would make me bark. Man, those Harry sure. Potter rides are effing amazing like i i want to go back to orlando i'll, I'll again. go back and i'll ride them all again but y'all need I, to go <laughs> is that what we need to do we'll see take the, my wife and go so the first thing <laughs> <That's right. laughs> y'all have a blast so the I'll first the <laughs> so the first time that i went down to the wizarding world harry potter was when i was in pharmacy school my, my roommate and i we saved every penny that we had and went down there for i think fall break and she got like some package where we went to the three broomsticks and had like a traditional English breakfast. Oh, nice. And it was so awesome to be in the park before everybody else. And we just got to sit down, like, kind of like what she said. We had the, they served these, it wasn't like a big thing, but they served these huge plates and all this stuff. And it was just, it was so magical with Harry Potter. But anyway, it was so, it was really cool. 
And I just would like to do that whole kind of special experience again with that stuff. Well, and that's on the level of what he's talking about. And I don't know how much you guys upgrade your package, but you can do that. Like you can do like, we just need three meals a day. You can do the, like, we want really good yeah. meals a day. Yeah. Or like we want to have a character meal every single time, you know. Yeah, if I like, want to sit down three times a day and eat a giant meal, I could yeah, probably do that. Yeah, you once. can you can pay extra to do that. And Universal does the same thing. A friend of mine's going in October, and she was just telling me she said because of COVID, they're not selling what they call like their club level package because it includes all the food. Mm -hmm. Because they're not doing food. Disney's the not way. either. We couldn't get it. And that's one of the things that sucked about it is mm. we couldn't. We we ate two, <coughs> we ate three sit down meals the whole week, but we had to. You know, those are paid. We had to pay for those instead of having them like normally. You have one every single day that's already included, but you can't do that now. So did you stay yeah. at a hotel that you had like a mini kitchen, or did you guys just have to do? Uh, no, we didn't have a mini kitchen. We had uh. We have a refrigerator, but we just we just bought everything. We just paid okay, for snacks. Just got we just stuff, didn't okay. we just didn't eat like we normally eat. Like normally, we'll put down put away some food, but because yeah. it's all included. Yeah, but this time it was like, oh well, we're just going to buy muffins or something at the resort, and then we'll we'll get a counter service lunch somewhere. Okay. Did you eat the hot dog that's wrapped in a pickle that's deep fried and served with peanut butter? I have not heard of that. I don't think. I just heard about this week. They I don't know if that's real. You, you know, don't think so? You know what you need to go to Disney World for? That pickle wrapped in the hot dog. <laughs> that, that would be that would be the second thing. <laughs> oh, you're gonna say Dole Whip, aren't you? Well, no, Dole uh, Dole. Oh, Dole Whip. Do they have <laughs> Do they have Philly cheesesteaks made with that cheap? Steak? Imagine That's Imagine like. a bread cone stuffed with. Mac and cheese. You told me about that. We've talked about that. I could have told that. you that's why I need to go. <laughs> We've had some. I would have. I would have forgotten. He's just what gonna was... eat those while ride all the rides. He's just that's, gonna walk uh, around. And that's okay. Just... He'll just walk around with in us between eating. pickle dogs. <laughs> in between. Now is that really? Is the pickle dog really a thing at Disney World? I don't know if that's. I don't the pick. Somebody went through a lot of trouble to make a very tantalizing picture. If it's just made up, it sure no, looks I mean, good. I've heard of that, but not at Disney World. That's the only thing that. That's why I was I, questioning. I may have made Disney. I, I was just thinking about the happiest place on earth when I saw that. Because <laughs> I feel like there's a. I feel like it's like Ranger Stadium in Texas or something like that. That they have like, it's the hot dog stuffed with a pickle, and then it's got like uh, the cornbread. Like it's a corn dog with like a pickle in it or something it's like that. It's a pickle wrapped in a hot dog. It's a hot dog wrapped in a pickle, deep fried, served with peanut butter. Okay. I'm we not might, sure we how might be, the, we might be talking about two different things, but they both sound amazing. I'll show you a picture. Okay. So on this level, I went to the ale house, which I haven't been probably in a year or two uh, for a meeting for North Mississippi Endurance. And, you know, they hook into that old olive branch pizza or whatever it's yeah. called. They have a pickle pizza, a fried pickle pizza. Have you I, had I that saw yet? that and I was like, have you had that? Big cake? I have not. You're not into it. He's keto. I haven't been eating pizza and stuff. <sighs> Yeah. We we'll get we we'll get some cauliflower crust. But you can <laughs> yeah, they do a have a cauliflower ca fried, crust. There. Hot dog wrapped in a pickle and I would. <laughs> <laughs> He'd break keto He'd for break that. Keto. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. let's remember who we're talking about. Now, there's rules can be broken at any time. <laughs> uh, how long have you been doing keto now? Since the end of December. Feeling good. I feel as good as I've ever felt in my life. You working out consistently? Yes. Running or weightlifting or both? I'm in the weightlifting thing right now. I've been doing both, um, but currently I'm all jacked up. I'm getting jacked up. Awesome. So, yeah, I, I'm feeling very, very good. I, I don't know how much of that is attributed to, to keto or not, but I, I feel really, really good. You know, um, my son has, uh, has started working. My oldest son has started working out again recently, and I don't know how he headed down the path, but... He's not going full on vegan, but he saw a YouTube video or read an article or something that was basically talking about how plant-based uh, foods will help him recover faster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just wants to get swole as quickly as possible. And he's like, you know, I need to need to recover so I can work out the next day. And so, like, he he's not full on vegan, but, like, we had Easter dinner yesterday and uh, his wife uh, – made um mashed potatoes with vegan sour cream you know and uh that sounds gross it, 
<laughs> you don't like white <laughs> stuff anyway. <laughs> you don't count. Mixed into the mashed potatoes, you couldn't tell. But like, you know, he's eating quinoa bowls, and like he's even got his kids into it. He's like, you know, once a week, we're gonna do something that's completely plant based. And I don't care what I got to find for the kids, but I'm going to find some. And uh, his oldest son likes um, chickenless chicken nuggets. I was going to say, the, they have They're those chickenless chicken nuggets that are good. They're good. Yep. And I was just, and Cameron is such a picky eater that I was really surprised. He's like, no, they were good, Paul. They were good. <laughs> I, I, like, I awesome. believe I believe in every fad diet I've ever done. And I've done them all. And I, I, it's not a fad diet if you stick with it. But I mean... It, Plant-based, I felt great on plant-based. Juicing, just doing straight juice diet, I felt great when I was juicing. When I've done just about everything that I've done with, done consistently and stuck with that, I felt good doing it. I mean, I don't know what that means. I did I did a juicing. I guess it's just my way of saying, like, I, I don't stand, I just hate all the arguments and oh, right. uh, about this thing and the other. I, th- I think that the, everything works on some level. And everything doesn't, you know, depending or, on what you Yeah, I mean, it, it's and just most what of works it's for better you. than stuffing your face with cheeseburgers and Correct. pizza. Correct. Yeah, now I've done, time. unfortunately, Which I've is. spent the majority of my life doing that. <laughs> That's where I've done most of my research. <laughs> it turns out if I stop doing all those things. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can do damn near anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, the, the amount of leash that you have really is a whole lot. So I know uh, we went to uh, the dip the other day because I wanted to... to I didn't eat enough macros that day that I could actually fit a cheeseburger in my diet. So we went to the dip, and I think he found the Philly cheesesteak guts to be very amazing. Amazing. What is the dip? I'm not familiar with this it's place, a sorry. place in Hernando. It's a okay. restaurant. Okay. It's like a dairy bar on steroids. And so you ate Philly cheesesteak basically without the bread. Yeah. Correct. Oh, that would be amazing. The bread just <laughs> well, slows you there's down. Well, the Philly cheesesteak, the... The cheap, chopped up steak that you find at carnivals, fairs, things like that. I just, gas stations. I love that shit. I don't know what animal that comes from or what part of whatever processed or what 3D printer that comes out of. <laughs> but it's it's just the best. Get yourself on Amazon or wherever you can order online and, and order you some steakums. Do you remember steakums? Yes, I do. They're still around. Oh, man. That's They're what I was around. looking for. I, it's, a, it's a flat piece. I kept it's wanting literally to say like steak sh- escape. It's, it's a shaved piece of beef. Mm-hmm. And when you buy it, it comes in a box. And I'm going to say there's 10 slices. And like there's a piece of parchment paper in between. And so you just oh. take it out and you put it in a, in a Skittle and like defrost it and cook it right there in the Skittle. I'm down. I'll and like it. Uh, it, it comes out looking like a Philly cheesesteak, you know, mm. like the shaved meat. Oh, and, okay. Never heard of this before. Um, I've never eaten a steak escape either, so I don't know what oh, they steak really escape. have. There's one in Collierville still. Oh, I love it. Why am I not finding steakums? I just Googled steakums. It came right up. <laughs> but it, not through Amazon. <laughs> maybe it's uh, I, maybe you can't find it on Amazon. I apologize. I well, how know. else are you supposed to buy something if you can't buy it on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, depending on how quick they deliver, we will have some here. Steakums, I'm telling you, and it's, Ooh, it's and not bad. Just the bad. picture looks good. It it it's not. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's got a lot of sodium in it, but yeah, it's... sodium doesn't matter. <laughs> you need more sodium. I think you should. Put He's got to balance his electrolytes out. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's my go-to face. there. <laughs> if you're gonna be swollen, swifty, that's right. You, gotta you know, eat I some gotta sodium. add that sodium but, another bite of butter. This is an ongoing argument. I Amanda have. was like, I was going to get you Easter basket, but I didn't want to just put butter in it. <laughs> I did. That's like Kerrygold butter is the only thing I could think to put in it. Like, it's like fancy Irish butter. Um, I have this argument with people on a regular basis about like how much sodium is too much. And I'm like, there is too much, but it's all, it's also kind of balanced by how much water you drink. Because if you drink enough water, you're going to flush out like a lot of that sodium. So. I drink a gallon a day. I don't like Oof. to drink water because I, I want to leave more room for sodium. <laughs> I want to fill up that, that gallon hole in my heart. I want to fill that up with salt. You're filling some kind of hole up in your heart with salt. <laughs> Did you order some steak and shit? Not yet. Okay. He's about to push He's messing with it, though. Get you some steakums. Get you some uh, provolone cheese. Yeah, just make it make it up yourself, man. You can you can have you can have the Philly cheesesteak without the bread anytime you want. You can I'll throw tell some you about peanut it. butter and pickles on there. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you like the do you like, ranch? 
do you like no. the uh, peppers and onions? <laughs> Fawn's like, gag. <laughs> He's had a ranch hurts you. You're like my it. wife. You have to <laughs> throw it in there. <laughs> Very end. All these good list of things in ranch. And ranch. ranch. What do you <laughs> mess up the whole <laughs> list with that? I put I put A1 on mine. A1. I like A1 oh, too. Oh, A1 mm. bold and spicy is amazing. We're we're about out of time. Uh, man, I've got to go. Do it. No, I'm, I'm, no, no. We got to go. We're at time. Next time. Lift heavy, run long. Number 204 is in the books. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Peace.